Good morning all. It's been a while since I've done a teardown and so I thought I'd uh, have a look at this. It's the XCAM Site 2 Creative Site uh, 2 axis handheld gimbal uh, for smartphones, 2 axis stabilizer for smartphones. So it's a multi perspective, intelligent, stable system ensures smooth and steady capture of images and videos. Say goodbye to shaky and blur memories. Now, this item has been very kindly supplied by Banggood.com, so thanks very much to Banggood. And I'll put a link to this item on their website in the description below. Right, let's do a very quick unboxing. Instructions, card. Uh, this is very Apple-esque, isn't it? Having it all white. This is accessories, USB cable. Uh, some sticky pads and silica gel in there, I seem to remember. And that's the stabiliser. I think all that's in there is a little uh, fabric bag, a wallet to put this in. And it just makes a sort of um, the right shaped box to put this in. So let's take a closer look at the unit. So uh, this is it. Uh, your phone fits in there between these two arms. This is all spring loaded to accommodate different size phones. Uh, that rotates by about just over 90 degrees, it looks like. And then this arm swings out, but that is a bit of a tight fit in there. And I must admit, I do feel that it's putting a bit of stress on that bearing. But anyway, this swings out. Now that's also very, very tight. Again, putting stress on that uh, bearing there, but you have to bring that right up. And then by adjusting that little grub screw, it effectively adjusts the end point where this stops. And that uh, gives this thing a sort of gravitational balance. So when your phone is in it, it just hangs like that and everything is completely uh, balanced. Let's put the phone in and have a look at that. So this is my uh, Nexus 4 phone. Actually, I think it's my wife's old Nexus 4 phone. It's exactly the same phone that I use to shoot these videos. So there's another one here, which is my old one. Uh, yes, I think the one I shoot with is my old one, which one of the um, rows of sensors on the screen failed. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get this thing in. I think it's going to be that way up. Now, you've got to get this thing balanced. So I need to put that dead center. And it does look like it might be touching the volume up and down button, but it's not quite because there is enough of a gap behind that gripper that it isn't going to press that button. And now this should be balanced. It's very nearly balanced and that's reasonably well balanced. It's not quite balanced, but it's probably good enough. In fact, if I push that harder against the end stop, it probably is better balanced. And then we switch on with this button here. And from this sort of floppy arrangement, you'll see what happens it totally stabilizes the phone. So I can do that and the phone stays in its axis. Now there is a little control under here. Let's turn it over. This control means I can tilt up and down. So if I go back to this position, I can tilt the phone down and I can tilt the phone up and it just changes the position that the phone is naturally pointing at. So if I have it slightly pointing down, I could perhaps turn it on in a minute so we could see it. But that is holding roughly horizontal. It's all a bit strange because if I tilt this forward, this doesn't appear to be fitted terribly well in there. There's a black sort of foot sitting in a square holder behind the phone there, and it just seems to be slightly offset. So the phone's at a funny angle. But uh, yeah, anyway, it. Uh, holds it in, oh, that's because I haven't got that properly horizontal. So it holds it in balance that way, and it also holds it in balance that way. Now you can either hold this arm uh, like so, or you can hold it vertically like that, and I can still twist with the uh, tilt control. Or you can even hold it uh, that way, because this thing rotates almost a full 360 degrees. It's near the end stop there, that's the end stop. So you can hold this in pretty much any position you want, uh, even almost back on itself. And it just keeps the phone totally balanced. 
That's pretty neat. Now I suppose the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So what I ought to do is take this outside and uh, do a shot with me walking across the garden uh, with no stabilizer and then another one with the stabilizer and see how they compare. Okay, so first without the stabilizer. Now this is me just holding it still, both hands, and I can hold it reasonably still. Let's try one hand and that's bound to be a little more shaky. And now let's start walking up the garden. Now I'm not deliberately shaking it, I am trying to hold it as still as I can, but inevitably that's going to wobble. Right, now let's try it again with the stabiliser. So I'm holding the stabiliser vertical, of course I'm doing this with one hand only. You will get a little bit of movement left to right because that's the one axis that is not being stabilised. But let's start walking down the garden and I can see some left and right uh, judder, but there shouldn't be any in the other two directions. The other two directions being up and down like that, which I'm now using the little tilt switch to control, and rotate like that, which I'm just forcing the camera against its will, really. Now, another test I thought would be interesting would be to just raise and lower this. So I'm going to lower it down to the ground and then raise it to arm's length and of course it's rotating in my hand but the gimbal should be removing uh, a lot of that rotational error. So is this a useful thing? Um, I suppose because it doesn't stabilize in the pan direction you are still going to get wobble in the pan direction but yeah it does seem to stabilize reasonably well in the other two directions so I don't know I mean it's an extra thing to carry um, I don't know whether modern uh, top-of-the-range smartphones have image stabilization. Maybe they do now. Now the instructions say don't switch it on without the phone in there because of course it's all very unbalanced. Let's see what happens if you do. And it gets very cross and vibrates because it just doesn't have the phone to damp it. And of course with the motors moving like that um, it's going to use a lot more power. I don't know whether that's saying it's going to switch off. I think it does switch off after a while if uh, it detects that there's something wrong. But let's put it out of its misery. But I thought it'd be fun to take this thing apart. And it looks like it is take apartable because uh, these little rubber bungs would be hiding screws. And I'm kind of expecting to see in here um, a motor in this bulging section and possibly belt drive down to a gear to rotate that. Not sure what's going to be going on in this one because there's no obvious lumps where a motor might be. That has a much um, longer turning circle. That's almost 360 degrees. It's probably about 340 or 350 whereas this is only about 100 and something, maybe 120 degrees. Um, but anyway, let's get these rubber bungs out and remove some screws. So these are coming out quite easily. Uh, they're not that deep, these ones. Just get your fingernail behind them. Fortunately, I do now have fingernails. These two I'll probably have to use uh, a screwdriver. And uh, now let's start, oh, that's tight. Let's start undoing the five screws. See if this, oh, that's bending apart quite a lot. Hmm, how's that held in? Why is that screw not coming out of its housing? Right, these screws are all out. Now is that going to... Yep. And there we have it. There is a stepper motor. Ah, okay, so there's no belt drive, it's just geared. Um, there's a lot of gunk in there. A lot of um, lubricant. Now I don't think this is a stepper motor, I think this is just a regular DC motor. Um, I don't see why it would need to be a stepper motor. There are also three, what look like, uh, maybe not RGB, but there are three coloured LEDs here. I didn't see that light up. I'll have to check that when I put this back together. Uh, the soldering is pretty horrific inside here. Uh, two wires, ah, two wires going down into here. Why would they want wires in here? Ah, probably for the orientation sensor. I wonder how that works. Maybe I'll have to take this piece apart as well. 
actually of course there are four wires going down into uh, the bit that the camera sits on and they're actually marked SCL, SDA, uh, VCC I would imagine that is and ground so this is just I squared C these are the four wires of I squared C so there's probably an I squared C um, orientation sensor in there what are they called a MEMS sensor something like that um, this seems very distorted this carrier that's got the motor on it also it's got a split in it it's actually broken there it's completely cracked right through and as I said earlier that foot the black foot doesn't seem to be seated properly in the phone carrier part so it's all off center so I'm not sure whether this one they had a problem assembling it and it's all ended up being a bit mm, iffy right I've put the cover back on this section because I was getting a bit covered in that lubricant uh, I just wanted to see whether these lights lit up I probably saw them earlier and just didn't wasn't really aware of them oh yeah okay <laughs> Yes, it does get a bit cross without the phone to balance it, but yeah, they light up blue. Okay, let's turn that off. And uh, now I'm going to uh, take these bungs out and take a look in the main section. So same thing with these, just got to get these bungs out. These bungs are much deeper uh, fitted. So they're proving a little bit more difficult to get out, but uh, they are coming out. Now I'm going to have to hope that the top part uh, comes away because I don't really want to undo the grub screws which are holding uh, this onto the shaft because there are a load of wires uh, going through there as well. You can see in there, there are all the wires. Is that on? No. Yes, all the wires are uh, running through that link and through the this axle somehow. So I'll undo these screws and just see whether this top piece comes off and uh, yeah that's come away uh, pretty much as I was hoping now I should be able to uh, clip that back in there which is how it was supplied and that means we can now have a look in this section and in the main handle actually let me see if I can just lighten this up a bit I'll lock the exposure there yes that's better in the main handle we have um, another one of these motors it says 20 ohms on it I think it's just a DC motor. Um, there's a printed circuit board. We'll take a look at that in more detail. Uh, a LiPo, which is 1000 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts. And down here, there's a little module with an antenna. And I'm pretty sure that's the Bluetooth module because this unit is Bluetooth. Where does it say it? I think it says it in there. Yes, it's the Bluetooth version. Let's uh, clip that back in there. Let's take a look at the printed circuit board. So what have we got on here? Well, there's some uh, power components here right next to the LiPo connector. So I'm assuming that's some sort of boost converter to generate perhaps five volts for all of this lot. Uh, that looks like one of these orientation type sensor chips. So a, a MEMS chip or a, uh, oh, what are they? Accelerometer, um, gyro, magnetometer, all that kind of stuff. There's a big microcontroller here. It has been scratched, although they've left some of the markings on. But we probably won't be able to work out what that is. A uh, little control here, which is for the tilt control. So you can tilt it one way or the other. And I think if you press it, it triggers a Bluetooth uh, take photo, start recording type command, uh, which will then go to your camera and start recording. So you've just got a little bit of... Um, remote control seems a bit unnecessary but it's offered uh, under here there is the main on off switch and some blue LEDs to make it look blue and pretty uh, there's an R050 resistor there so current sensing for something maybe that's to do with either charging the LiPo or perhaps overcurrent when it's in use uh, there's a fuse there that TS that's a polyfuse by the look of it and then there are just a number of transistors, resistors and capacitors. So is this a useful thing? Well, I'm not really sure. I mean, if your phone doesn't have image stabilization, and uh, I would imagine most of the phones that do have it, it's going to be done digitally, not um, mechanically or optically. So this is interesting from the point of view 
that uh, yeah it does do the job completely mechanically with these uh, little DC motors I assume they're DC motors and the uh, the one on the end of the arm there but I'm just not sure whether I'd want to carry this I mean it might actually be better to just carry a separate digital camera that does have image stabilization either um, you know the ones that work by tilting the lens or tilting the sensor so they're sort of slightly mechanical not as obviously mechanical as this um, yeah it might just be easier to carry a camera that has the image stabilization you're after rather than a separate stabilizer which does only stabilize in uh, two directions now I'm gonna have to watch the footage I took in the garden to see whether the remaining axis which is the pan whether the jitter in the pan direction um, is a problem and makes this unit essentially useless I don't know and uh, I do worry a little bit about the stress that's being put on that bearing when you bend this arm up I mean possibly I could undo that and lighten this thing but it's very very tight and you can see when I move it how much that that axle there bends when I move this up and down it does seem to me to bend an awful lot and uh, that doesn't seem to fit terribly well in there that shouldn't click in there to my mind that should just drop into there smoothly and why has that been mounted at this peculiar angle um, I would have thought that should have been mounted completely uh, flat that seems to have tightened up a bit actually I wonder if that's uh, something I've done when I've while well, I've been reassembling it right I've got my camera back on there and I've uh, switched it on and yeah it does seem to be uh, working can I still tilt it yeah the tilt control still works that's fine so yeah that seemed ooh, that's with it tilted it does go at funny angles but uh, yeah that does seem to be all back together and working well right I'm just going to uh, plug my phone into my computer and get that garden footage uh, off the camera uh, so that I can make a, an assessment of whether or not the uh, the stabilizer is effective yes those videos were interesting I mean clearly this thing is quite effective at removing the uh, what would you call that well in an airplane that's roll isn't it the roll error um, it also stabilizes in uh, well for camera enthusiasts that's tilt for uh, pilots that is pitch it stabilizes that as well um, but it doesn't stabilize this your or pan for cameras and in fact we could see quite a bit of jittery wobbling in the pan direction so I don't know I'm undecided about whether this would be a useful thing to carry around so that was my uh, teardown and I suppose it was a kind of mini review of the XCAM Site 2 uh, Bluetooth model uh, two axis stabilizer cheerio